As much as we hate to admit it, we're all slaves to the internet. It can provide us with such beauty and such ignorance. It can be a source of creating love or destroying it. But despite this love-hate relationship with the internet, our Stockholm Syndrome keeps us constantly connected to it and in fear of living without it. But what if you wake up one day and the internet is gone due to like a natural disaster or something? Or even worse, what if it were taken over by a government or country? Wouldn't having a backup internet be nice? There are already a few alternative internets out there, but what would it take to build your own? To understand that, we have to first learn how the internet works. Historically, the internet first started to emerge as large mainframes connected directly to each other. Then in the early 90s, when the internet was commercialized, these mainframes were replaced with a mesh network of data transmission points, or nodes, known as data centers. Now owned by various companies, they combine to create the internet backbone. To get the internet to you, these data centers have a star network of regional gateway nodes that are then connected to local nodes, which are then connected directly to your node, either by the company itself or by an ISP allowed to use the company's backbone. This connection to the backbone allows us to visit any website connected to it. And now that the core of the internet backbone stretches all the way around the world, so does our reach. Now, obviously recreating this for ourselves is unrealistic, but recreating a small portion of it is totally feasible. For example, in 2010, a devastating earthquake in Haiti knocked out internet and telecommunication for most of the country, which left a lot of people without a means of communication. In response, an Australian group started the Servo project with the goal of connecting mobile phones together to create their own wireless mesh network. What's a mesh network? Well, it's one of several network topologies, but with this one, every device receives and transmits data to and from every other connected device. Mesh networks are generally auto-discovering whenever a new device is added and self-healing whenever a device is removed. If you have an Android phone, you can download and try the Servo project yourself. Basically, the app allows you to communicate with other phones in the vicinity that also have the app installed. So you can call, text, and send photos to any other connected phone without the need for any other network. FireChat is an alternative app for iOS and Android that applies a similar principle. So what would it take for you to create your own small-scale wireless mesh network? The first thing you need is at least three devices or three friends with devices. Then you need some type of routing software that allows them to route data transmissions to and from each other. One such software is called Open Garden. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Android, and once it's installed, it allows those devices to securely connect to each other through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So if only one of those devices has an internet connection, that connection can be shared throughout the entire network. Another software option is called Commotion. The benefit of Commotion is that it can be installed on routers, which allows them to then broadcast the signal to other mesh devices. The downside to Commotion is that it doesn't securely transfer data from one device to another. So while it may be good for private use, it's really not good for wide use. For setting up a more serious mesh net, the Project MeshNet initiative is a great resource. Rising from the Darknet Plan subreddit, it's an effort to replace the current internet. Basically, it uses an encrypted IPv6 network in the CJDNS protocol to automatically recognize and securely communicate with other CJDNS devices. Essentially, all you need to do is download and implement the CJDNS protocols on a Linux, Mac, or Android system. You can then create what's called a mesh local network by peering with other CJDNS users in your area. You can visit this link to see if one already exists. And if you have a live internet connection, you can connect to other worldwide mesh local networks known as the Hyperborea. But as soon as enough mesh local networks are created, there won't even be a need for an internet backbone at all. If you're interested in creating your own Raspberry Pi CJDNS node, you can watch my Tinkernut Labs tutorial for setting one up. So pick an internet alternative, test it out, and see how you would survive without internet access. Whichever method you choose, however, you should find comfort in the fact that you're making the internet yours again. 
Know of any more mesh network alternatives? Let me know in the comments below. And if you guys got any value out of this video and would like to give some value back, please consider donating to my Patreon campaign, donating via Bitcoin, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Twitter. And as always, for more, go to Tinkernut.com.